teach God. 57 years walking with God. 56 years with the same woman. Praise God. I know some folks, they get tired of one and they just get them another. You know, it's that easy. Just, you know, I don't like you, baby. Hit the road, Jack. Don't come back. I'm going to buy me a new one. Well, I've married this one for better or worse. And so I'm just going to stick with it. She's, got, she's been with me for so long I couldn't. If I found another, I'd probably get in trouble. Hey, God. Can you testify from there enough to say she can hear you? fun to be here. We uh, we talk about it a lot because it's just a good place to be and I like it. More than that, I love Jesus and I'm so thankful that I found him when I was a young lady. Uh, I was uh, baptized in probably 15 places uh, before I ever actually uh, showed it just kind of grew up is what I'm trying to say and I would never forget the time when I was 15 years old in the Illinois uh, youth convention they didn't call it that bit, but that's something anyway when I received the gift of the Holy Ghost and I made up my mind that I intended to keep it for the rest of my life I'm thankful for his love and his blessings to me Praise God. I know y'all not used to an old man preaching. Brother Scott, he's so energetic and so full. Man, I'm telling you what, he could have just went on for my, for my part of it. He could have just went on. But it falls my lot. I felt something from God, and I want to share with you today, but before I, I get started, I want to ask the question. I know you don't have to answer it if you don't want to, but I, I just kind of like to know how many of you that don't have the Holy Ghost. Would you be honest with me and just show it, raise your hand if you don't, you don't have the Holy Ghost? My goodness. Well, I got my work cut out for me. You know, preaching to the saints is one thing, but to win a soul is another. And that's what I'm here for, to win a soul. I, I want to get you to heaven if you'll listen to me today. I will help you get to heaven. I will help you get to heaven if you'll listen to me today. If you'll obey God's word, not Brother Morgan's word, but you obey God's word, and that word will get you to heaven. That if you stay true to God and stay true to his word, then you won't fail. You will go to heaven because you made up your mind. You're not going to turn around. You're headed for heaven, and that's where you want to go. You don't want to go to hell. Just let me tell you, you don't want to go to hell. The Bible says that hell is the fire is never quenched, and the worm dies not. It's a hot place. It's hot enough in Barstow. It's hot enough in Missouri. But I, I can't imagine, I, I can't imagine anybody wanting to go to hell. But you're, you know what? I guess there's a lot of folks that's headed that way because they don't want anything else. They don't want to change. They, they don't want nothing else because if they got something else, they would have to change their lifestyle. If they got something, if they got the Holy Ghost, they would have to walk right. 
that you got the Holy Ghost, you'd have to spit one. That's old saying. That's some of that old Missouri stuff. But that's all right. What I'd like to do today, is, it's a very familiar passage of Scripture. And there's quite a few of them. And I'm not going to try to read them all because it wouldn't do me no good. I couldn't get to them fast enough. So I'm hoping that you will uh, set back, fasten your seatbelt, and get ready for the ride. Hey, God. You know, I feel God in this place today. If I'd have been younger, I think I could have danced longer. If I would have been younger, I believe I could have sang longer. You know what? It's not the age that matters today. It's what God says and what God is. And God dwells in the body. God lives in the heart. And that's what it's all about. My heart is not my own, but it's his. My heart is his. Praise God. There's a very familiar scripture that we've heard quoted and read and preached about for so much. you find it in, in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. And I don't even have to look at my Bible to give it to you. I've quoted this thing a jillion times. I've read it a jillion times. I've heard it preached a jillion times. But something clicked just a few days ago. And I want to share it with you. Now, where, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get, it says, now faith. Now faith is the subject of things hoped. Am I right? Is that what, I, what it says? Yes. Now faith is the subject of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. Now my text for today, for your writing or whatever you do with it, is that now. 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 Well, it's got not yesterday, not tomorrow, but now. Now faith is a thing that's something. You know what's up? Faith. Hope for. Things not seen. You may be seated. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you, God, for the opportunity to bring your word today, God. That, Lord, we know that we're nothing. We're clay in the master's hand. God, we ask you to take the clay, Lord, today. Mold it, God, to what you want it to be. Make it, God, and speak through the clay. Lord, if you spoke through a donkey, you can speak through me, Lord. And I ask you, Lord, to help me today, God, that I may speak the words of faith today, God. The hope, God, is beyond this life. The hope, God, of this life, everyday life, Lord. It's faith in you, God. When I wake up in the morning, Jesus, it's faith in you. In Jesus' name. Faith. A lot of folks use it. A lot of folks abuse it. Faith. I, I, I just got to, you know, I start like this and they start talking about faith. And it's what I think right now. Brother Scott, it's not what, yet, what I said yesterday or tomorrow, but it's right now. It's what I think right now. It's what I want right now. It's what I ask for right now, that if we could have enough faith to believe that God, the Bible said he is a rewarder, he is a rewarder if we seek him, he is a God that can do all things, he, he, he don't change folks, he hasn't changed in 57 years for me, he hasn't changed one bit, when I found God, I found the best thing in my life, when I found God, I was, before I found him, I was the most miserable person in the world. I just found him to be real. I was an old country boy, and down in the southeast part of Missouri, I picked cotton, I, dry, I drove tractors, I, uh, you know, I done it all. When I started life with six-year-old, and I chopped cotton for free. 
my dad owned 360 acres, and us kids, there was eight of us, but, you know, he used us. He didn't abuse us. He just used us and told us we were, you know, to help him raise a crop, and we took him at his word, and every morning I got up, and I knew where I was headed. At 12 o'clock, I knew where I was headed. I was headed to the dinner table. So, but I, for all of that, I'm not, I'm not sorry of it because it made something out of me that only God could help make. I was an alcoholic at 20 year old. Oh, you wouldn't believe that, would you? I smoked three packs of cigarettes a day. Never tried anything without the dope and all that, marijuana and all that stuff. I got round, I got right down to the real stuff. Y'all, y'all think this there, all this other stuff you got, it, it ain't nothing compared to what I have. No, very, very few people would even try what I did. And I'm not even gonna take it because I don't want you trying it. Some of you just might go find out if it's really real. So you have to be careful what you say. But we're talking about faith today. Faith in God, faith in yourself, faith in his word. And I, I, I really believe and I felt it today that there's some folks here that really, you really want God. If I, you know, I really feel that. I really feel that, that you really want God. And you know, the, the thing about God is he wants you. He died for you. He hung there on the cross for you. But you've got to have faith in God that God can do what he says he can do. You've got to have faith in God that God will supply your need. You've got to have faith in God that God can take you wherever you want to go. When I left this morning, that my son's house on the other side of Barstar, on the other side of uh, Bakersfield, I put Jesus on the front, in front of my car. I put the angels on the back of my car because that's how much I trust God, that I put myself, my car, my, in the hands of God, that God would protect me. Now, my folks don't believe it, but I think God takes care of us. I passed two highway patrolmen doing nine of my You don't think God works, then that's fine. Go ahead and go out there and, and don't believe God and don't think God can do it, and we get in trouble. But I don't advise you to go out there and just try God out. I was in a hurry, and I knew I was going to be late, and I don't like to be late for church. I don't like to be late when it, when it starts. I want to be a part of it. There's some preachers that, I know this is kind of, you know, off the subject. But some of these folks that I know of preachers, a friend of mine that we went to church with and helped him and in his church, uh, he was always late. He started late, and he ended up late. And he kept you late. I mean, that, you know, the early birds are the one that gets the worm. So if you want to get God, you just get there on time and you join in and begin to magnify God and you worship with the saints of God and you will find God. Now, I'm going to get in on my, to what I want to talk about today. I'm not going to be a long-winded Morgan. <coughs> I choked on that. I'm sorry, Lord. Matthew chapter 6. You don't have to go there unless you want to. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 30. It's just part of the scripture, and I'm not going to lay it on it, but it says, 
Oh, ye of little faith. Oh, ye of little faith. Jesus was teaching the 12 apostles how to have faith. He was teaching them that they had to trust in something they couldn't see. Jesus was with them, and Jesus was teaching them. But he said, this is not it. This is not what you're going to get. You're going to receive something better than what I'm doing now. But they had to have faith. They just couldn't see the things that God did, but really God was teaching them how to have faith. So today I'm, I'm preaching to you or talking to you, however you want to put it. I want you to have faith only in him. Don't put faith in man. This man is right. What he says, he's a man of God. He's the pastor of this church, and he's the watchman of the wall. But he's human too. We we take, I, I know, I take too much stock and, and a lot of things, a lot of preachers, I take too much stock in them. I believe in them. But sometimes I've been let down. My faith failed me because I lost faith in that person. And we can lose faith in God because the Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. If we don't have faith, you can't touch God, you can't get on the hold of God, you can't find God without faith. You've got to have faith that God is going to do something for you. You've got to ask for it. You've got to ask for it, and you'll get it. Now, some of us are like the man that was in the tomb when Jesus came along. I think I can help you today on how to find God. But they, when the, they was on the boat, and they came to the shore side, and there was a gentleman that was in the tomb that they said he was possessed, that he had demons. I, I want you to know, if you study that out, and if you'll read that story, you will find the very first thing, Brother Scott, that that man did, though he was a sinner. He had devils in him, that he was bound by sin. That when he, all of that, but when the Bible said that when Jesus stepped out of the boat, that the man went and worshipped him. You say, you don't have, you, I don't have the Holy Ghost. I got news for you, honey. If you want God, really, you got to worship him before God can come to you. You got to let God know that you mean business. You got to let God know that you're very serious in what you're doing. You got to know that God is on your side. So God. And the man saw Jesus. I wonder how he knew that was Jesus. He was just a man. You know, spirits really know a person. Brother Scott can go in the Walmart store and he's prayed like he always does and everything. He's, he's right. He does it right. If you watch him, you watch people watching him. They watch him. They, they watch him because you know why they watch him? Because he has a spirit. And that Satan doesn't like the spirit. That's, you know that, that the spirit always controls man. There's a good spirit and there's a bad spirit. There's a right spirit and there's a wrong spirit. And a lot of times we get in the wrong spirit. And we find ourselves peddling by ourselves down the street. But anyway, the man saw Jesus. And he runs. The Bible said he fell down. And he worshiped. But Brother Morgan, what happened? What, what happened? Well, I'm going to tell you what happened. After That's the way it works. And did you know that, I, I'm going to help you now, when you come to the altar and you seek God, 
if you really want God, because he knows whether you want him or not, and, and we have put ourselves into hours and hours and hours of praying folks that really didn't want it. We, we wore ourselves out because they didn't want it. So, you know, I, I, I know kind of what if they do or they don't. And I pray for them, and I help them is that. until I feel that they're not serious. Then I don't have time. But, this, see, this is all, we, we, we've done a lot of it wrong. I'm saying it's not right or wrong for some, but it's wrong. Because the way you get God is that you have faith in God, that God will answer your prayer. But most of the time, if you really want God and you find God, it's when you give him your heart. When you give him your heart, you have to give God the heart. The Bible says from the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. So when you begin to magnify God, and when you begin to praise God, you begin to tell God how miserable you are. You begin to tell God that you're sick and afflicted in your body. That you begin to have faith that God's word is true. That it's ever settled. Faith in God. There's not a devil big enough that God can't move. There's not a devil in hell that the devil can't move. Son, stand up. Stand up. Yeah, you. Stand up. You're having fun back there, so I just want to ask. Oh, okay. I, I want to ask you a question anyway. I, wanna, I got you. I got you when I first come in this morning. I'm, I'm, I'm after you. And the Holy Ghost, I'm after you. Do you want the Holy Ghost? You already have it? You never have it? You don't have the Holy Ghost? Have you ever spoke with other tongues? Never? Let me ask you a question. Do you want it? Would you like to have God in your life that will take care of all your problems? That he can set you free. You want it. Okay. I done. You can sit down. When I get when I get through in a minute, I'm gonna see if you really want it. But you come to the front, and I'm not gonna lay hands on you, and I'm not gonna cast no devil out of you. I'm gonna let God take care of it. If you got a right heart, if you got a hungry heart, God will take care of it. God will fill you. God will do it. I know, I know we all, some of us older folks, we, you know, we've been down the road, we know. But let me just tell you something. Out of the 57 years that I've walked with God, I've had some bad times, and I've had to trust God. But you know what? I had faith in God. I didn't care what was coming or going. I didn't have no food on my table. Trust in God. That's all I could do because I didn't have anybody else to turn to. I didn't. He didn't make me, but I found that, that trusting in God and going to God, even even in the in the morning time, even at noon time, even at night time, it doesn't make any difference what the time is. It's what your heart is. It's the way you feel. It's what you want from God. If you want something from God, you've got to go to God with your heart and by faith to believe that you can have it. How many of you remember the story about uh, Peter and Jesus? I've heard that. I've heard that preached for many times, frontwards and backwards, and all kinds of ways. But I just kind of got something that not too long ago that I think I found out why Peter, the Bible said when he got through, even Jesus told him, he said, oh, ye of little faith. My one Bible says, the scripture says, what does it, do, does it hinder you? So Peter asked Jesus for something. He said, Jesus, bid me to come. This is what we've got to do. This is what you've got to do. Jesus, bid me to come. 
and Jesus will say, come. Then what's going to happen is, you're going to get out in the water, as Peter did. You're going to get into the water, and you're going to look around, and you're going to lose your faith. That's what Peter did. He lost his faith. You know why Peter lost his faith? It's because of what he saw around him. His mind, he lost what he was had and when he got out of the water. And when he began to look at the things around him, he lost sight of God. So what are you saying, Brother Morgan? I'm telling you that even as older folks, Sometimes when we begin to, begin to pray, I found out that, that the devil doesn't want you to get contact. God, the devil does not want you to touch God because as long as he can keep you down, he's got you where he wants you. Oh, you're not lost. You're not backslidden, but you've lost your faith. He said, will I find faith when I come back? Will I find those folks that tell me they love me? Well, I have faith in me. Why, Lord? Well, I've been a long time coming. I've been a long time coming. So we lose our faith. God promises something. Listen. 46 years. I believe that's how old he is. My baby son. 46, I think it is. Yeah, 46. The day he was born, I lost the hearing in my right ear. It just popped and fell. And I'm still deaf. I said, well, Brother Morgan, you, you know, you talk about faith and all this and that. Why, why God ain't healed you? That's not for me to question. The question is, do I have faith in God? Do I still trust him? Do I still believe in him? Do I, do I know that God said, I'll never leave you or forsake you? I'll go with you into the end. So you know what? I may not have hearing in my right ear, but that doesn't say much because I still trust him. I still believe that he's able. I still know that he can heal. It doesn't make any difference. I know that God can do it because I've seen God heal too much. I've seen God heal cancer. I've seen God heal blinded eyes. I've seen God uh, heal deaf ears. I've seen God take people that can't walk and walk again. It ain't been too long ago till i seen a woman that had been in a wheelchair for a long time and I prayed for her and I sought God for her and she got up out of the wheelchair and walked. Does that make you feel bad? No, 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 no. I'm so glad Jesus loved her. And I still have faith. My grandson right now is going through some things. And he had tumor in his back wrapped around his thigh. He's having some hard time. But you know what? I hurt for him, but I haven't lost my faith. I can't lose my faith because if I lose my faith, I lose God. If I, if I lose my faith in God, I can't go to God and ask God for something. I can't ask him for healing. I can't ask him to supply my need. I can't ask God anything because I don't know God, and God don't hear me. You want God to hear you, find God. Find him real. Find him what he wants you to be. The Holy Ghost can change your life. It will make you, the Bible says you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Now, I've got something I, that a little bit more I want to give you. You remember the passage in the Old Testament when the prophet was hidden over there and, you know, that old Jezebel was after him and going to kill him and he hid himself because I'm the only one left. He was pitted. He sure was feeling sorry for himself. He sure was feeling bad. They're out to kill me, Brother Scott. I'm the only one left. 
But God sustained him. God sent manna from heaven. The raven fed him. And yet he couldn't trust God. He didn't believe that God. Then when it all happened, now this is my story. This is what I want to get to. When all of that, that's fine. That was good. But God sent him somewhere else. The brook dried up. The raven quit feeding him. I know how that feels. You think that you you just you've got to trust God. You've got to believe that God can supply your needs according to his riches and glory. He will do it. See, you, you think we have the Holy Ghost just because, you know, we have the Holy Ghost because of all of that. Honey, I like the dividends. I like the blessings of God. I like to know that when I need God, I have faith enough in God that I go to God and I ask God for what I need, not what I want. I've been wanting a brand new car, and I want it this way. I want a brand new Honda. I want a new car. That's my want. He didn't supply what I thought I needed. you know what? I take what he gives me. I have faith in God that, that if I accept the little bit today, if I accept the little bit today, tomorrow, I can ask him again and I can get some more. It's not a one thing. It's a one-time thing. It's an everyday deal. It's a fact that God said, I will take care of you. I will watch over you. I will not let anything harm you if you trust and have faith in God that God can do anything. Now, here's the, here's the thing. Here's what it is. This is what gets all that. I'm going to get down here. I like to get out here. This story about That just the, the brook dried up. The raven quit feeding. This is the first thing he thought of. Oh God, I can't, I'm done for. That I, God doesn't love me no more. Because he doesn't help me. He didn't give me my new car. But I got a Honda, 2002 Honda. I drove it for four years. Got 223,000 on it. thankful for what you have. And the Lord will give you more. So anyway, the story goes. It's not my story. It's in the Bible. You can read it. My story, we'd already be through and go eat. But this is, this is real. This is real. This is what happened. I think I've got something that'll help us all. I know. So he sends him down from the town of the city, city you know. And he told him, he said, I've already got it all worked out. I've got something for you when you get there. You got all you have to do is go down. He said, I've got a little widow woman. husband and he kicked the bucket and you become rich. That's not too for, for, know, too many things happen. Anyway, the story goes that he went on his way and he got down we were with Joppa of the city when he went down and he saw this woman that God had already got it all worked out. I'm fixing to get to y'all. Y'all ain't, you, you, you're going to, it's going to be a different story. So he said, and, and everybody, you know, everybody likes this story. Okay, I'm going to get to you the way it really happened. Some, 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 some. 
he went down there and he sees the woman. And he said, Hey, lady. I'm paraphrasing. I'm not supposed to say it. I'll just. He said, He saw her and he said, Hey, lady. He said, Fetch me some. Then, this is where it hurts. This is what happens sometimes. Brother Scott, he asked that woman for something that, that she was fixing to have, and the Bible says she was going to die. He said, oh, and oh, it's in there. I'm telling you like it is. I can prove it. Oh, by the way, Fix me up some bread. Fix me some bread. Now this is what. Now what? This is what happened. She turned around and she said, but oh, you don't understand. That's all I have. One more cake. That's all I've got. And I, I'm going to go bake it and we're going to eat it, and we're going to die. That's like some of us, you know, because God don't do what we want him to do right then. We'll just go eat our cake and die. That's what you'll do if you don't listen to God. Anyway, the story goes, this I can prove in the Bible. He said, oh, and by the way, You lousy, good for nothing, prophet. You, you, you're a scumball. You want to take my last morsel? You want me to give you that money or that bread? But you see, she didn't stop. She was that. All she could think about was what she had, and that that preacher wanted that. Tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. I've been in this thing so long. I pastored four churches. I know exactly. Now, I said I'm going to get in trouble, and I am. I don't want to embarrass anybody, okay? You got $20 somewhere? You got, is that all you got? Would you give it to me? you got. I just took your thing in there, didn't you? But you don't have this. I love this. You on the you on the right track, son. Huh? But you see, that prophet asked her for the very last thing she had. But she couldn't. You can, but she couldn't. She took everything. He took everything she had. That's what she thought. In her mind, she thought this is what you can have. I, I, I'll, I'll get it later. She thought in her mind, just like a lot of all of us, we all think that way, that it's not fair that we have to give everything we have. I have I got a twenty dollar bill. Here you go. Want this one? <laughs> I ain't God. <laughs> I'd like to be like him. No, I uh, anyway. 
the story that I, I, I've got your attention. You think I'm just doing all that? that, that I've got your attention. You, you're, inter you're interested now in what I'm going to say and where I'm going with it. But you see, the story is that what you need to know and what we need to learn, what we need to keep in our minds is that if we are what God wants us to be, if we are obedient, to the word of God. There's nothing that you can't have. But you have to have faith. It may not come today. It may come tomorrow. It may not come tomorrow, but it may come next week. But it's according to your faith. Even in the, in the, in the scripture, you can find. I've got it marked down up here. I can tell you. He said, oh, I have not found so great a faith. She had, they had so much faith. And then God, and I'll tell you something else. That if, if the beginning of the miracles were that when the woman with the issue of blood for 12 years, she had spent everything she spent. She didn't have any money. She had no way of, of, of getting what she needed. But there was one thing that happened. Somebody that she heard about Jesus. That if she could get to Jesus, that everything would be all right. So I'm telling you today, if you get to Jesus, Everything's going to be all right. But if you don't go to Jesus, you can't have nothing because you don't ask for it. You don't believe in it. You don't have faith in it. But God said, I'll do it. I will do it. So she said, in her mind, I'm for sure, just like all of us, she was thinking, my God, you know, he wants, he wants my what I'm going to do and, to die, and eat it and die. Well, she was, here's the thing. I'm going to tell you something. If you get, if I got sick and God didn't heal me, he wants me to die. Oh, Brother Morgan, uh, listen, you think I'm joking? I told a lady not too long ago, matter of fact, a week ago, right here in this state, down in Orange County, I told her, I said, what you need to do, she's calling me, she's always coming to me, she was always, you know, Brother Morgan, I need this, and Brother Morgan, Brother Morgan, and Brother Morgan, and Brother Morgan, and I kept telling this lady, and I kept praying for this lady, and I kept telling her, and so the other day, I told her, I said, why don't you just ask God to kill you? You're not going to do any good. You're not going to do what God said to do. You're not going to obey God. But you know what? No way. You think I'm so? Where's your faith? Where's your faith? Now, we, we talked about now faith. We talked about faith. That with, if you don't have faith, you can't please God. And God can't do nothing for you if you don't have faith. But let me just tell you something. If that lady would go to God like she says she goes to, and she says, God, if you can't heal me, if you can't do what you what I need in my life, I just need to get out of the way because I'm no good to anybody. Boy, Brother Morgan, that's mean. But listen, I don't want you to die. I don't want to die. But you know what? I trust God. My heart, my faith. If he wants to take me, he's going to take me anyway, whether I want him to or not. It's my time to go, honey. It don't, it, there's no age limit on when God chooses to take you. We fret over so much stuff that in, and if we left it in the hands of God, if God's taking care of us, why in the name of God do we try to make God do something he don't want to do? I woke up this morning and all I could think about was how good it feel for God to be in my heart. It felt so good to know that even things still loves me enough that he would touch me, that he would let me 
feel his kindness and his glory of God. I'm telling you, I gave him my heart. I love 12, 57 years ago. As a young man of 21, I laid on that floor. I didn't have much to offer. All I had to do was offer him my heart and my willingness to obey him and to walk after God. Oh, I've not done it perfectly, but I want you to know that I, he still can count on me, that I go to God and God takes care of me. When I'm hungry, oh, I, I can prove it. I, 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 you know what? You say, oh, I've heard all this, but I can prove it. When I was hungry, he fed me. When I was thirsty, he gave me strength. When I needed money, he supplied he gave me what I needed, not what I wanted. He supplied my need. That's what he said. He said it was faith in God that God would supply your need. He didn't help me with my walk. I already told you what I want to do. That's what I want to do. But I do have a new car. Thousand nine. Didn't cost me money. Got a phone call from my adopted son. He said, Dad, I want you to come to California. I said, Okay, I'll be there. He didn't tell me what he was doing. He just said, Dad, I need you to come to California. Came to California, went to his house, we stayed three or four days. He took me down and he picked me out of the car and he said, Pop, he said, This is your free. Set free. Don't tell me that living for God and having faith in God that God can't do what he said he would do, that he would take care of us. When I was hungry, I knock on the door. But let me tell you what I've done to get there. And I'm going to tell you what I did to get there. Just like the man in the tomb. I had my children with me. We were in Illinois. No work, no, no money coming in. So... I went, my wife would go to the cupboard and she would look in there and there was canned tomatoes and they were supposed to have run out. There wasn't no more in there. I had a dollar, I found a dollar, and she found a dollar in her purse. And I said, honey, let's have faith in God. Okay, if you can, we can have faith. So we had, we said our prayer, we Prayed a little bit. I said, honey, I said, won't you go look in your purse one more time? She went into her purse and she found a dollar bill. That was enough to get a loaf of bread and tomatoes. Macaroni. I said, honey, let's go look one more time. And now jars out there in that cover. I wasn't out there. I knew it wasn't out there. It was empty. But I had faith. God said, ask. Faith. I asked, and I walked out there, and I got a quart of tomatoes. Canned tomatoes. Well, they said, well, that's good, Brother Morgan. But there was, there was a little more than the story. Wasn't too many days later, it was still getting bad. It was still, and so I told my I said, well, it's time for Daddy to go into action. I said, this has gone long enough. I said, I, I, I'm going into action. I said, hey, all of you sit down right here on the couch. You sit down on the couch. I said, Daddy's got a job to do. They sat down. My living room was 24 feet long. 
Lord, who ever made a 24-foot living room? That was a long way from door to door. As it was, I began to go one way, and I began to magnify God. I said, if my kids stood, sat and watched it happen, I would pace back to the other side, and by the time I would get there, I was feeling some real good Holy Ghost spirit, and I began to pick up some momentum, and I began to pace a little faster, and I, kept, I walked and over to the other side of the, of the living room, and I feeling brought a whole lot better and I took off and it finally got to work I was running across there I was shouting praising God thanking God for what he was what he was going to do that what I was going to get and lo and behold somebody knocked on the door that had Have faith in God. All you got to have is faith in Him. But you got to do what God wants you to do. You got to find God. You got to worship God. You got to magnify God. Uh, oh, don't listen. Don't, don't get embarrassed. Don't get embarrassed when you, that's where you worship God. I get out on the side of the road and worship God. I got in Walmart and worship God. Now, I just don't make you mean no difference because, see, I found out something, that God is really real, and I like what I get from God because I'm faithful to God, and I love God, and I try to do what he wants me to do, and God takes care of me all the time. You're supposed to quit at 12, so that's what we're going to do. I can go on scripture after scripture. Faith. You have to have it. You've got to exercise it. Even the 12 apostles prayed for more faith. He said, Lord, increase our faith. So you know what? It's not a shame to ask God for more faith. It's not a shame to ask God for things that you know you need that's going to help you sustain yourself and take care of your family and pay your, what you owe and all these things. There's nothing wrong with that, church. I, I, you know, I don't know, but I'm just telling you, it works. Faith without works. What he said, the one he went, James he said, faith without works and works without faith. It's no good. You have to you have to have faith. You have to work faith. You have to, to you know, you have to do things for God. That's what I'm doing today. I'm helping, I'm trying to find you uh, so let you know that God is real and you need God more than you need anything else. Put God first. That's what he said. His scripture says, seek ye first. Seek you first. It didn't say just in money. It just said, seek me. Seek. Well, how did you seek? We played a game when I was little. Seek. You know, hide and seek. That we that we somewhere would hide and you go looking for them. But honey, got a hit. He's right out in the open. You just blind and you can't see God because you don't know God. You have got you do not have God in your heart in that you need God to be what? Love. A heart. And I promise you, listen to me. I don't have to put my hand on you. If you want me to, I can and I will. But did you know you can do more than I can do? And an hour. If you take your heart, that's what I tell anybody. That's when, I'm, when I'm praying with people, that's what I tell them. You give him your heart. This is what he wants. If 
He's got this. Love me with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. You have to have God in your heart. Without a delay, without any further doubt, would you please stand with me? I started when I asked the question, and that's what I'm going to ask you again. Do you really want to be free from sin? Do you really want God? Because if you don't want him, you won't find him. But if you want him, he's here. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you. Did you know God can't make you pray? Did you know that, you, that God will not make you do anything? Make you wish you had, but he won't make you do anything. You have to have God right here. It has to come from here. And when you get here, you give it all to him. I promise you, I, I, I guarantee it, 100%, I can guarantee it. If you come here and you give God your heart and you begin to express yourself, oh, and I'm a miserable so-and-so, and I know what I've done, and I know that I've done wrong, Lord. And that you're, what you're doing is you're repenting. You're asking for, you're wanting God to, to fill that void and to help you overcome. That's what it's all about. But if you don't want it, you won't get it. So I'm asking you today, without trying to force you or make you, How bad do you want God?